Hello and welcome to the Finance, Business, and Purpose podcast. I'm your host, Adina Applebaum. I'm an accredited financial counselor, financial and business coach, and public interest immigration attorney. This show is all about the relationship between empowering ourselves through finances, building businesses that create social change, make an impact, and also help us and our families build wealth in the process, as well as how ultimately these things can assist in your journey of finding your purpose. So many of us have been told that it's either or, that we either have to um, focus on making a lot of money or on helping others and doing good. And this show is all about how it doesn't have to be either or. It can be both and, and in fact, often when you are following your purpose and empowering yourself with your finances and creating a business, it really allows you to do all of these things and thrive financially, as well as make change, help others, and create an impact. So in this show, we're going to be sharing lots of practical steps with you on how you can be strengthening your finances, building wealth, starting businesses, and also starting or continuing on that journey of finding your true purpose. We'll also be sharing lots of stories from our incredible guests who are purpose-driven entrepreneurs, who are experts in these spaces and creating social change um, and inspiring all of us. So thank you for the time to listen to the show. Um, I love, love, love hearing from our audience. So if any episodes in particular resonate with you, or if you're wanting to hear more about a topic, please do reach out to me. The best way is on Instagram at Adina Applebaum. It's linked uh, below in most of the show notes. And I can't wait to connect. Thanks again for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Hey, everyone. It's Adina. I wanted to welcome you to season five of the Now Finance, Business, and Purpose podcast. For those of you who have been around for a while listening to the show, first of all, I'm so grateful for your support. And second of all, wanted to update you on why there's yet another new name for the podcast. I know I had recently changed the name um, this year to the Business of Purpose. And yeah, I wanted to give like a little update on the creative process behind the scenes, why there's a new name. So uh, many of you may remember that this show for a very long time since it started in December 2020 was called the Immigrant Finance Podcast. Um, and episodes one through four, 141 are pretty much all focused on finances for immigrant families. So if you are from an immigrant family or want to learn more about this topic of immigrant finances, definitely check out episodes one through 141. Um, but I did reach a point where I was ready to talk about some additional topics too. And also I felt intuitively that my audience was ready to hear about more topics too. So I know that those of you in my audience who are immigrants are not just immigrants, they're also humans who care about, you know, other topics like your health and your well-being and finding your purpose and other ways to empower yourself besides finances. So that led me um, earlier in this year in I believe it was, I want to say, fall 2022, to rename the po- the podcast to something that felt broader, that allowed me to talk about these more topics, that allowed me to not have to label the show, um, you know, with this term from the immigration system. And I named it the Business of Purpose. And that has been super, super exciting to be able to talk about these other topics to talk more about finding your purpose and that journey. And then I found myself coming back to still wanting to talk about finances and and continue to provide content that is specific for immigrant families when it comes to finances, but also other topics too that apply to others and that apply regardless of what the immigration system labels you. So this is where I have now been led to the name of the Finance, Business, and Purpose 
podcast. It's finally what feels really good, like a mix of all of these things and something that is very clear of exactly what I'm talking about. Um, So going forward, you'll continue to hear me talk a lot about finances, business, and finding your purpose in this show. Um, I hope that you like the new name. I'd love to hear your feedback and what you think. Um, I I don't want to promise that I won't change it again because I am a really creative person and I'm constantly evolving and having new ideas. So it may happen again, but um, I do have to say at this moment, this name finally feels really true to what I'm talking about in this show. Um, So I hope it will stick for at least a while. And yeah, let me know what you think. With that, um, I'd like to introduce season five of this podcast, um, starting with episode, I believe we're at 162 now. Um, I'm just so grateful for all of you who have been listening um, throughout the show. For those of you who are new listening to the show and taking some time to check it out, hopefully this gives you a little background on how the show has developed over time. And it just means a lot to have this platform to share information with people, to connect with people, to feature amazing guests. We've had some incredible guest speakers on this show. Definitely check them out in prior episodes and going forward. And we'll see what season five brings us with this new name. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to listen. It means the world to me. If the show has been helpful for you so far, it would uh, mean a lot if you could go on Apple Podcasts and leave a quick review. Um, Takes just like a minute. All you got to do is scroll all the way down to um, where it says, I believe it says leave a review, something like that. And that really helps us be able to reach more people so we can get this information out to more folks who can benefit. So thank you again. And I hope you enjoy the next episode. Hi there. In this episode, I want to talk with you about how you can begin that process to stop worrying about money constantly. And we're going to get into actually a little bit of anatomy, a little bit of science here, a little bit of health stuff. Um, I will say I'm certainly not a doctor, not a medical professional, not a psychologist. I'm sharing some information from some very, very brief reading I did online about the nervous system. Um, But I have had many different experts uh, recently pointing to how important the nervous system is when it comes to, you know, our mental health, our physical health. And for me, it really connects the dots to finances, in terms of our relationship with money and that worry and anxiety and fear and overwhelm that so many of us feel when it comes to money. So I thought I would do an episode today bringing together the, um, some of the science, you know, very, very briefly on the nervous system and applying it to the financial context and our relationship with money. And this is really about how, again, you can begin that process to work on your money mindset, your relationship with money, so that you can get to a place where you stop worrying about money so much and you can have financial peace of mind and feel secure no matter how much is in your bank account. Because let me tell you a little secret, having more money after a certain point does not actually give you more happiness, give you more safety. There are studies showing that after people make about, I believe it's 70,000, 75,000, after that, studies have shown folks do not report being more happy, having more meaning in their life. And certainly uh, for those of us who have been at our points, been at points in our lives either previously or currently, where we are making under that threshold, when we are making under that 70,000, we very much would feel a lot more secure if we get to that point, right? And I've been there uh, when I was way under that and, and really feeling the stress and anxiety. But 
I can tell you that when you get past that point, it doesn't necessarily go away. And at a certain point when your, your, your safety, your sense of security is tied to always how much is in your bank account, how much money you have, it really sets you up for failure because ultimately our sense of security and our relationship with money and our ability to feel safe has to come from within no matter what's going on because we can't control what's going on in the economy. We can't control what happens with our jobs. We can't control what happens in the stock market, right? At the end of the day, all we can control really is the inner work, is our own mindset and relationship with money. And so this topic of how you can do some of that work in that journey through working on and having more awareness about how the nervous system works, I find super, super interesting. Um, you know, a lot of you in our community are from immigrant families, um, from families who have experienced a lot of trauma, who've experienced serious financial stress, who know what it's like to have nothing. Um, I know my ancestors, my great grandparents certainly suffered from that when they immigrated to the U.S. and they were fleeing for their lives as refugees and had nothing. Um, they, they certainly had a lot of trauma and scarcity around money and feeling unsafe, right? That's been passed down in generations. A lot of this stuff gets passed down in generations. And even if the next generations are more stable financially or make it to the middle class, whatever, like what is what happened in my own family, those constant worries and fears about money can still be there. That was certainly my experience. And then I know what it's like also being married to an immigrant, to my husband, Mao, and going through the experience with him when he immigrated here and our financial struggles that many of you have heard me talk about. If, if you're new you know, to the episode, you, you haven't heard our story, go back and listen to episode one. When I started the podcast, you'll hear some more about that and how, how it was such a scary time for us and we felt so alone. Um, but yeah, for many years, we really struggled and we felt super unsafe and we didn't have money and we had no financial knowledge, no financial education. And we were very, very anxious all the time. And that began our journey. Um, but even getting out of that situation, I still myself have struggled in, with periods, you know, it goes in waves with worrying about money. And this is something that is a lifetime journey to address, to work on. It's not a one and done fix, but I think I do think a lot of the most impactful work can actually happen outside of our financial planning. Certainly, there's a lot of things we can do with our financial planning to set things up to be secure, to plan for the future, to plan for financial freedom, to set up the systems, right? To work on our money mindset. But there's also this whole opportunity available outside of the financial world where we can work on things like our nervous system, for example, which I'll talk a little bit about now in this episode. So from my you know, basic Googling and Wikipedia and all that, please excuse me if you are a medical professional um, and please reach out and correct me if I am portraying any of this not accurately. Uh, but my understanding from my research is that the nervous system regulates the body's unconscious actions, right? It's a system throughout our body that is responding and reacting to things that happen to us in life and causing us to feel certain ways. And it has three main parts. It has the parasympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system, excuse me if I'm pronouncing these incorrectly. Um, and we're going to talk about um, the first two, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic in this episode. In particular, we're going to be talking about the sympathetic nervous system. So let me do my best to break these down a little bit. Um, very simply, the parasympathetic system is the one that relaxes us and calms us down. And the sympathetic uh, nervous system is the one that can cause stress. So um, I read an easy way to remember this is parasympathetic begins with P. P stands for peace. 
sympathetic nervous system begins with S. S stands for stress. So that's kind of how I was like, okay, I got this now. When I heard that, that made it a little more clear. Um, and so to dig into that a little bit more, let's talk about first that parasympathetic nervous system. That's the one that calms you, right? P, parasympathetic, for P for peace. So the role of the parasympathetic nervous system is to relax and slow the body. It's responsible for stimulation of what's called the rest and digest activities and the feed and breed activities that occur when the body is at rest. Is at rest. Compare that to the sympathetic nervous system, which its primary role and process is to stimulate the body's fight or flight response. So that kind of like emergency mode. If you haven't heard of fight or flight response, um, this is a physical reaction that occurs in response to a perceived harmful attack, event, or threat to survival. Um, so you can imagine like you're in the woods and a bear comes running at you. You know, your body is going to go into full fight or flight mode. And it's called that because you're either going to like try and fight this bear or you're going to try and flee and go into flight to save yourself. Um, so your your body goes into overdrive, right, to deal with that emergency situation. And um, I will talk about the sympathetic nervous system a little bit more. That's the what I was just talking about, the fight or flight stress system of the nervous system. But I, I first want to just pause with the science and the anatomy and all that and connect this to finances so that we're on the same page. Um, and why it's important to, to know more about how the nervous system works when it comes to finances and understanding your relationship with money. So if you're like me, um, when I've had periods of worrying a lot about money, being in, be, getting into spirals of scarcity about money, um, whether it's from going through a difficult financial time or from the immigrant experience of you or a loved one that's close to you, or from generations uh, back of your your ancestors' immigration experiences or traumas and how they impacted money, it can be this thing of constant worry, that this thing of being up at night with anxiety about money, worrying about the future, worrying about not being able to put food on the table for your family, um, and, and your body really goes into this fight or flight mode when this happens. So I know um, in particular, we, at least I, you know, really experienced this. I mean, I know Mao did too, but I think for me, I was like really triggered um, when he, when we were dealing with the whole transition when he immigrated here and we were struggling financially and things were very uncertain with immigration stuff and with jobs, right? Um, like I was just freaking out all the time. And I didn't even know it at the time because I like was so in it. But looking back on it, I was freaking out all the time. And I remember just constantly worrying about like, we're never going to be able to have a home. We're never going to be able to have children. Like just like this, you know, nothing's going to work out. We're not going to be able to survive. And looking back on it, I know, know my sympathetic nervous system was really in overdrive um, and I was in that really, that really big fear state. And I, I wanted to draw that out for you all because I talk to many, many people in our community who tell me about experiencing that kind of feeling and about worrying about money all the time and how much it affects every aspect of their lives from their sleep to their mental health to their relationships. And so I think it's really empowering to know why that's happening in terms of your body. Right, and to know what part of your nervous system is getting kicked into overdrive when that's happening because knowledge is power, right? Like we can't change anything or improve or get better if we don't know why something's happening in the first place, if we don't have the awareness of what's going on in the first place, right? Because, you know, I'm going to talk about toward the end of the episode some, you know, things that can be done to, to um, help, you know, support the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the one that gives you more of the rest, the peace to sort of even things out when 
the sympathetic nervous system, the stress fight or flight one is in overdrive so that you can balance yourself out more. Right. Um, but none of that's going to make sense if we don't first build the awareness together that what's going on here is we're in fight or flight mode when this is happening and the sympathetic nervous system is taking over and we're in this state of emergency that's supposed to be temporary, but many of us can be living from that place for a long time, right? Um, or for long periods due to financial stress, right? That is that is the really shitty thing about financial stress and financial challenges and not having access to financial education, um, not having tools of how to improve your, your finances and build systems is it can keep you in that place of fight or flight with your money longer than you need to be, right? When it, it should be something that's temporary, just an emergency, just when you're about to get eaten by that bear, right? Whatever the situation is. So um, this is how, you know, many of us can be in a position where we feel unsafe um, no matter what we do to try to improve our finances, no matter how much we save, no matter how much overtime we do, no, ma- no matter how many extra jobs we take on, right? We can still feel unsafe because we're living in that emergency fight or flight mode. And I'm just thinking of so many coaching students I've had um, who who have been in this space and how we've been able to work through it. Um, and I'm thinking in particular of some folks who are, were on the side, um, you know, of more like oversaving than overspending. And just being in a constant preparing for an emergency mode. And that was really my experience to um, growing up in a Jewish family, you know, with um, great grandparents who had fled for their lives with nothing. And, you know, um, that trauma being passed down, it's like just anything could happen. The worst case scenario could happen at any moment. Like it, was, it wasn't said out loud, but it was sort of this underlying current that, and that gets passed down when you don't build this awareness, when you don't work on this stuff, it gets passed down generation to generation. So the students I'm thinking of who um, have been in this position, I have seen them actually have really excellent finances, like very significant savings, right? Um, Even owning property, having good jobs. But if you look at their overall financial well-being, they are not safe. And they, no matter how much they save, they're not going to feel safe because they're stuck in that mode where safety comes from how much is in their bank account. And when you define things that way, your sense of safety, right, um, you're never going to win. So that's why we want to move the conversation and the thought process to building safety internally, no matter what's going on, right? Um, Which that's a whole nother episode. That's a whole... uh, coaching program itself. But, um, you know, one way we can begin that conversation is by understanding better your nervous system and understanding better how to feel safe within your own body by getting out of that emergency fight or flight mode. Um, Learning about strategies around money mindset and, and building a positive relationship with money is also so critical. So you can stop worrying constantly about money and get to that place of financial peace of mind. You know, so many people I work with come to me and they say their goal, my goal is I want to have financial freedom. And that is such a subjective term, right? That can mean something totally different to a lot of different people. For one person, that could mean being a multimillionaire. For another person, it could mean having, you know, $10,000 in savings in the bank and having time with their family. Like, It's different for everyone, but really, you know, when you think about it, what financial freedom comes down to is this ability to feel safe, right? Um, No matter what's going on. And like, yes, that is a privilege that you can only begin to think about when you're not struggling a lot financially. So there's a mix of the practical strategy, financial planning we have to do, but there's also the mindset the nervous system regulation, right? The relationship with money that I'm talking about. 
so that you can actually feel that. Because if we do just the strategy, if we do just the building the financial plan and building the savings and investments and the retirement account and the properties and the businesses, you're never going to win because it'll never be enough. We have to think about this stuff as well. So here's a little bit more on the sympathetic nervous system back to the sciencey stuff. Um, so the fight or flight mode I talked about, that's that emergency mode you go into when the sympathetic nervous system is on overdrive was first described by Walter Bradford Cannon and his theory states that animals react to threats with a general discharge of the sympathetic nervous system. It's basically when the animal is preparing for fighting or fleeing. Um, so that's what I talked about, like about to get eaten by a bear, you know, like another animal is going to like their body is going to go into overdrive through the sympathetic nervous system so that they can be prepared to either fight back or flee. And it mainly works when there are threats or during emergencies. As we talked about, it's stimulated by stress or danger. Um, another example to make it more clear is like if you're walking down a dark street alone at night and a stranger approaches you, your body's, sorry, my phone went off, your body's going to respond in a way to enable you to either fight or to run away from the situation. Like, I think a lot of us have had that feeling at some point in our lives, no matter what it was, maybe not walking in a dark street at night, but um, some situation where your body just kind of tensed up and the adrenaline starts running and the cortisol and you're like, you know, you're ready to like defend yourself or like flee. Um, so that's what's going on. And physically what's happening when the sympathetic nervous system goes into overdrive is that your blood vessels get dilated, your blood pressure increases, your muscles contract, you start um, secreting sweat from the sweat glands. So you start sweating. Um, you're, you have start having like more oxygen, your, your lungs, I guess, expand or contract or something so that more oxygen is coming in. Um, your heart contracts, which helps the body prepare for the emergency situation. And think about it too, like these this high level of anxiety, you know, increased intensity, um, you know, the body re releasing stress hormones, your heart pounding, the quickening of your breath, um, the sweating I mentioned. So, oh, oh my gosh, I'm just starting to feel anxious just talking about this stuff. I'm so sorry if I'm making you feel that way, but hopefully this is uh, clarifying what I'm talking about. And I know we've all had these feelings at some point, these, these physical responses, not even necessarily feelings. <clears throat> so now that I'm saying it, you might remember a time when you felt that way. And what was going on there was that sympathetic nervous system going into effect. And so what I'm wondering, and and if, if this could be helpful for your own reflection, for improving your own relationship with money, what I'm wondering is to ask you, like, have you felt this with money before? Has this come up, th these physical responses or like the anxiety, um, have, has this come up when you've been worrying about money? And if so, now's the time to connect the dots and realize that your sympathetic nervous system might be overcompensating in this area of your life with money. And if so, that could be part of why you're feeling the stress and the overwhelm and the anxiety, right? No matter what you do, no matter how much you save no matter how much you work, right? And part of taking our power back, part of empowering ourselves, part of getting out of that situation and tapping into abundance and financial freedom, whatever, however we define that for ourselves is, is understanding that's going out so you can, going on so that you can learn how to get out of it, so that you can recognize when you're in that state and do some simple strategies to calm yourself down to get out of that. So like the next time you are starting to feel really anxious about money and your breath is quickening, maybe you're like sweating a little bit, whatever it is, um, you you can you can realize, okay, my my sympathetic nervous system is is dominating here. Like, what can I do to support my parasympathetic nervous system that will help 
calm you down, right? And I'll talk about a few things in a moment. Um, I just want to mention one more thing too is is just like another reason why this is so important besides your money is that research shows that there are long-term effects of chronic stress on our bodies, on our psychological and our physical health. Um, So it can really, really harm us physically long-term if we're in this state of the fight or flight mode, this emergency mode, this uh, sympathetic nervous system, if we're in that state a lot. So it's just another reason to take care of ourselves and do this work um, so that we don't stay, stay stuck in the sympathetic place and we can move between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system um, and, and have build more like experience and skills to transition into the parasympathetic so that we can be, be kind to ourselves and, you know, get ourselves out of that emergency mode. And that's also how you can get to a place where you can think more clearly, you know, focus on a solution, um, actually do some financial planning that might help you, you know, get out of that situation a little bit more or, or prepare you for the future to be less stressed about money. And it's, again, that combination of the strategy and the mindset so that, you know, they go hand in hand. Like if we can build skills to get out of this fight or flight mode, then we can do, you know, by doing the mindset work, by doing the awareness, then we can build, um, use strategy to, you know, make a plan to get out of even further and then repeat, like then do more mindset stuff to, you know, learn how to start feeling safer no matter what's going on, etc. So some things you can do, let's get to the, the good part. Some things you can do, um, to improve this situation is first of all, develop practices to improve your relationship with money. Um, this is something that is going to really be life changing. Um, you know, I started my money mindset journey and working on this stuff. Oh my gosh, when was it? I guess I would say like, I'm just thinking back when it all started. I guess I want to say like 2017, maybe. Um, I mean, I didn't even know about this stuff. I, didn't, I never heard the term money mindset, but I learned about it from um, a podcaster I loved listening to who later became my coach, right? Um, And so find resources where you can learn about money mindset, about your relationship with money. Um, I'll just put a shameless plug like this podcast is a great free resource. I talk about mindset all the time. Check out past episodes if you want more support in this area. Um, Number two, something you can do is to develop practices to help support that parasympathetic nervous system. That's the the part of the nervous system that calms us, that helps us rest. It's a little bit more science here. Um, So I just learned about this researching, but a big part of the parasympathetic nervous system is something called our vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. This is the longest nerve in the body. It connects our brain to many essential organs throughout our bodies, such as our the gut, you know, our intestines and stomach, our heart, our lungs, um, and it's a really important part of the rest and digest aspect of the nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, and it, it influences our breathing, our digestive function, our heart rate, which are all essential for our mental health and wellness. And I found a really great article that I'm going to link in the show notes um, about the vagus nerve. And it gives some some strategies, a list of strategies you can do to support your vagus nerve and help uh, this part of your nervous system relax more. Just a couple things in there I'll mention and then check out the article for more. So it talks about breath work you can do about um, sleep hygiene practices to have better quality of sleep. It's not just sleeping more, it's having quality sleep, meditation, exercise, massage, um, doing things that are that are fun, um, having you know positive thoughts, eating 
probiotics and omega-3 fatty acids, right? Like mindfulness activities, spending time in nature. There's a lot of really, really great tips um, in this article. And, you know, a lot of it's not surprising. It's like stuff that is helpful for relaxing. But I think understanding why and how it actually helps scientifically to calm your nervous system and get you out of fight or flight mode is really critical in terms of applying it to your finances and in terms of applying it to your relationship with money. So that's the second thing. And then the third tip I wanted to give is to, you know, if you want to take it to the next level, if you're feeling like, you know, you've you've kind of gotten the most you can out of free resources like podcasts or financial books at the library um, blogs, like if you feel like you, you know, you've got as far as you can take it, accessing free resources for support in this area, and you really want to take it to the next level with building a really healthy, strong relationship with money and feeling, you know, financial peace of mind, no matter what's going on, then working with a coach is a really great thing to help support you and take things to the next level. A coach can help you really dig into, you know, what are those stories and patterns and habits you have going on with money that we can reframe, that we can shift so that you can go to your next level. And also what are the strategies we can take to actually build financial systems that are going to support your improved relationship with money so that your finances are actually doing better and they cause less stress, right? Um, So we, you know, hope that these tips are helpful. I hope that this science background and applying it to money is empowering for you to understand better what you can do um, to improve your reaction, your response to stress and anxiety about money, whether it's, again, from trauma from family or from your own life experiences, whatever it is, um, we would love to support you in this journey. Um, If you're looking for more support, definitely reach out to me. I offer financial coaching and we have a lot of really great free resources as well. Um, For immigrant families in particular, I would recommend checking out our Immigrant Finance School program at ImmigrantFinanceSchool.com. That's a great way to get support on money mindset and the strategies to build a financial plan, no matter what your immigration status is. And we'll be having more resources and programs coming in the future for citizens as well. Um, So hope that this is useful for you to wrap up um, key takeaways from this episode Basically, there's, you know, a lot of empowerment here, learning about how your nervous system works and how that relates to your relationship with money Um, and the three takeaways of what you can do to begin this journey are number one, to develop practices to improve your relationship with money. Um, There's tons of free resources out there that can support you in this area. Number two, develop practices to strengthen your and support your parasympathetic nervous system and the vagus nerve. <clears throat> Number three, to work with a financial coach and a money mindset coach to help you take things to the next level. Thank you for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please take a moment to subscribe to the show and share this episode with one person who can benefit today. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode and bye for now.